I've just received a, well, not just obviously because I'm walking the dogs on now, but uh, when I was at home, I got a message on um, to my YouTube channel uh, with a, just a one line sentence saying, uh, What is your world view? Uh, I replied saying I just didn't really understand the question, but I've been thinking about it since, and it, it, it is quite an interesting question, I think. And it points out, or points up to me at least, some um, confusions in my own thinking and my ability to move past certain ideas, I suppose, which is to do with uh, the idea of a world view. Uh, it's, the world view itself is a visual metaphor. It assumes a viewpoint, it assumes, it assumes a kind of place to stand with, uh, from which one might gain a certain perspective certain understanding, a certain um, way of seeing the world, a place to see the world from, a point to view from. Uh, but the fact that it's a world view, I think, is significant. I think when we talk about world I think there's a number of different ways of doing it, but I think when we talk about world views, what we're kind of claiming, I think, is a, a, an overarching view, a particularly privileged view, or a uh, a view from a very high place, perhaps, an elevated view, a panoptical view, um, a place in which nothing is hidden, uh, atop the crow's nest, the, uh, the, a place where you can see over the horizon, a place where you can see beyond the gaze of other people, where your gaze isn't restricted, where there is nothing in your way. Uh, there's, that, there's that sense of a world view, I think, which is to do with um, I don't know, the, the clarity of the circumstances in which you are seeing. You're not clouded by superstition, or you're not clouded by prejudice, those kind of things. And also, um, it's a viewing position which is not uh, perspectival. It's not one which is located down on the ground amongst other people. Uh, you're... Um, it is, I'm not sure actually. But there's a, I think there's a sense in which if you have a world view, or if you claim a world view, then you're claiming to be able to see the world and the, and the patterns of, of the uh, information that make up that world. You're claiming some kind of privileged position, I think. But at the same time, I think, you're also, there's a sense in, in, in the idea of a world view, particularly uh, in science, I think, but also in spiritual context. There's a sense in which um, you're also uh, not viewpointed at all. This is something Thomas Nagel talks about in The View from Nowhere, which I haven't read in its entirety, but I've read the preceding essay, which is called Objectivity and Subjectivity, in a lovely little collection of essays called Mortal Thoughts. Uh, and in, um, in that essay and in the subsequent book, The View from Nowhere, he, he talks about this... Um, unspoken assumption that we have when we claim objectivity, um, which he sort of describes as a, as a way of looking at certain aspects of the world as if they were not viewpointed, as if they didn't have a personal perspective on them, as if it was the view from nowhere, or I'd probably call it a view from everywhere, which is something like a panoptical viewpoint. It does suggest the ability to see the whole picture and not one's own personal relation simply one's own personal relationship to the picture. But it also has this uh, um, not simply panoptical but this uh, multiple uh, omnipresent viewpoint. So you're seeing it from everywhere or nowhere, maybe that's where you're at. Um see from nowhere. So maybe there's something like that in this idea of a, of a world view, that it tries to do both. It tries to locate oneself subjectively as a located object in space alongside of the located objects in space, or the beings in space, if you like, with all of the implications that has for uh, personal opinion, personal viewpoint, personal taste, situatedness of any particular knowledge one, one might offer. It then does this second thing, which is to elevate that position, to claim a kind of elevated location for that viewing position, 
um, so that one has a an overview or an overarching view or a, uh, can see the big picture and so on. And then it also maybe does this third thing, which is to do with distributing that viewpoint so it isn't located in a, in a, a single position at all. It's uh, it's uh, omnipresent, omniscient. And that's the claim of science, of course. Uh, and in many ways, I think that claim is justified. It's also the claim in um, some spiritual practices, which again have this kind of um, claim to omniscience. There's an interesting phrase that comes out of um, uh, a southern Indian martial arts spiritual practice called Kalaripayu, in which one gets oneself into a particular state, and that state is called the body being all eyes. The body is all eyes. I really like that phrase. It's, uh, it's something that the uh, performance, performance theorist uh, Philip Zarelli talks about. The body is all eyes. Uh, yeah. I think the elevated position is an interesting one. I'll just say this last thing and I'll move on. This elevated position that's claimed as part of that overall paradigm is quite an interesting one. So I know that's been critiqued in quite a few places in relation to situated knowledge and in relation to contested knowledge. Now, um, when some, sometimes when we claim, or when the powers that be claim that knowledge is objective and can be seen by everyone in all conditions equally, it's actually situated, it's actually partial and um, subjective. And that's, that's the critique. And I know there's been some quite a few feminist writers have written on that. I'm thinking about Helen Sisu, uh, Julia Kristeva, and uh, Donna Haraway is really interesting on that one. She writes a lot about uh, science and technology in relation to knowledge, situated knowledge. And she's got this great phrase which she calls, uh, she calls it the God trick, which is this claim that, uh, that we can mimic the conditions of objectivity uh, by claiming a viewing position which is eleva elevated, brightly lit and omniscient in the way that we talk about object objectivity. So even if we're not being objective, even if there's nothing specifically objective about our claim, if we can, perhaps adopting our language, maybe let's say, if we can sort of simulate that viewing position, that viewpoint, that worldview, then what we say sounds objective and appears to be objective. Anyway, that's where as far as I've got really with that, with the um, what is your worldview question. Thanks for posing that one, whoever you are. Uh, I don't think I've answered it, but you'd certainly give me food for thought, so thanks again.